I don't know why I thought you needed to know that, but I guess you did, because I said so, so. Haha, now you know. Even if you didn't want to know, you were duped into knowing, and that's just what you get for showing up here. I'm gonna dupe you into knowing random fun facts about me. It's what we do. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a full face of my 2017 favorites and we're gonna talk more about that here in a second um, and like the process of me finding these because let me just tell you, wow, um, I had to go back through my channel and go all the way back to 2017, which is when I started my channel and boy was I different, holy cow. So that was a treat all by itself. But before we get into that and dive into the makeup and talk and whatever, I wanna say a huge thank you to those of you that took the time to answer my survey questions, whether they were on Instagram or on here in the community tab. So, so many of you took the time to not only answer my question of what do you want to see right now, but you also took the time to write out so many thoughts, ideas, and then communicate with other people and like really just be super expressive both with me and the community overall. Just to give you guys a brief rundown, you can let me know in the comments of this video. Uh, but basically what I'm seeing over there, like the main trends, I'm seeing a ton of shot my stash videos. So you'd like to see a lot of those, full face, nothing new, old favorites. Um, you'd like to see me ranking things. You would like to see uh, declutter, makeup collection, and organize like beauty room videos. And what are some, oh, some of you still do want to see as well, like new makeup, new foundation reviews, new full face whatever. It's like that's, that's definitely still something that I saw over there as well. So again, if you want to have your voice heard, you want to kind of weigh in, you can go check that out. All of that being said, obviously you are going to get kind of an amalgamation of those types of videos. You know, we're still going to have some new full face. We're not going to do as many because a lot of you expressed that you don't really want to see it, but I also had a lot of expression that you still do. So we're going to definitely play around with that. We're going to have new full face. We're going to have a lot of shot my stash. Also at some point we are going to be getting into the declutters and the makeup review or the makeup collection and like the organization of this room. Um, all of that will be happening, but those last three right there will not be happening probably for a little while still, just because I'm still in the process of getting everything set up and organizing this room and having it look good. And uh, that's also the same reason, coincidentally, that all of this makeup right here, it never gets put away because I, it occurred to me, why take the time to put all of this away when I'm just gonna have to take it all back out again anyways? That's a waste of time. Uh, so I just decided to be a slob and leave it out. Now with that insanely long intro out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about today's video, which is of course um, inspired by you guys. I took a couple of your ideas, mashed them together, and came up with a full face of my 2017 favorites. And this video for me, it's just, <laughs> this is, it's so nostalgic because in order to create this video and pull these products, I actually went back through myself into my channel, back into my first videos on YouTube, which my first one was uploaded April 16th of 2017. And obviously you can do the math on that. That's like lacking 10 days. That's three years ago this month. So I have been on YouTube for three years now and seeing the, the stuff that I used to love and how I did my hair and my makeup and even how I spoke and how I presented myself, it's so interesting to see that person change into who I am now. And I, I don't know, there was just something about this, this video in particular, that it's giving me so much nostalgia. And I don't wanna, you know, sit here and drone on, obviously I've done that enough, but it's just, I feel like changing up my content, it's so appropriate with, you know, what's going on and, and you guys, and just like the vibe that's happening around right now, I feel like I could use a revamp. Like all of us could use a little like shake it off revamp moment. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to zoom the camera in and let's go ahead and and start talking about my 2017 makeup favorites and deciding, do I still like them now? Are they any good? Are all of these just expired? I, probably, who are we kidding? Uh, so let's do it. All right, so first up, we're gonna go in with primer and I, I'm confident that one of them isn't expired. The other one, I'm a little bit nervous, uh, but we're gonna try both. We're just gonna split the face and see how it goes. On the first side over here, we are going to have the Origins Original Skin Pore Perfecting Cooling Primer with Willow herb. And on the other side, we are going to have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. And let me just tell you, both of these, I was diehard obsessed with. I have been through, I want to say this is either my second or third bottle of this. This is actually also, now that I think about it, this is my third bottle of this as well. And I'm going to start off first here with the Smashbox one. And I'm a little bit nervous about it. It still looks good. It doesn't have like a funky smell or anything. So, okay, you know what? We're just going to try it. 
I'm gonna just throw it on this half of the face. This primer is uh, actually a primer and moisturizer in one. It's a lot more hydrating than the <laughs> Origins one. Actually, truth be told, they're complete opposites of each other. This one is designed to keep you with more of a matte finish, whereas this one from Smashbox is designed to like sink into the skin and give you good moisture and prolonged moisture, but also prep and kind of smooth out your skin at the same time. And you can even see a little bit right here. It gives me like a nice, light, hydrated kind of glow. And then on the other side, we're gonna grab the Origins um, Pore Perfecting. This one, a lot of people hated because of the... The consistency, can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people didn't like this. I actually really did because it has the most bizarre cooling effect on your skin. Once you get it on your skin, that cooling feeling really dissipates. It has a really nice similar like softness on the skin as the primerizer side, but it does feel more um, mattified. So between the two, it's definitely, again, you know, more matte versus a little bit more glowy. Moving into foundation, as you guys can imagine, most anything I would have had in 2017 would probably be expired by now, but there was one foundation that I have continued to repurchase. I have bought bottle after bottle. You've heard me talk about it a ton, and that is my Catrice HD Full Coverage, and this really shocked me. I'm going to go ahead and actually apply it with my Real Technique sponge, but this um, foundation, I didn't think that I fell in love with this until 2018, and it was actually April, May, June. It was like maybe May or June of 2017, and from the moment that I used it and I saw the coverage and how lightweight it was, I continued to use this for the rest of 2017, 18, 19. I've, I've just never stopped using it. Um, so it's it's kind of a pleasure. It's kind of a fun oddity that I found that uh, I'm really excited to go in with today. Even though I use it all the time, I just used it the other day, I still love getting to play around with it because it's just such a good quality foundation. Obviously, there were other foundations that I was in love with um, in 2017 because I tried out so many. I've just, I feel like chesting foundations has always been my thing, but this was the only one that I I had on hand that I didn't need to go repurchase that I knew wasn't gonna break me out um, you know from being three years old and oh my god like I just I've never stopped loving this foundation it looks so beautiful it's so adjustable today I'm going in and leaving it about a medium coverage just because that's like where I've been liking my makeup lately um, but you can easily easily build this up this is a full full coverage foundation it doesn't take a lot it's very lightweight and for concealer it's been a love affair pretty much since the very beginning which evidently was 2017 and that is my Tarte Shape Tape I'm gonna take it in fair neutral and I'd like to say that I'm surprised by this concealer being in there so much because like I watched I want to say one two maybe four or five different favorites videos and then my end of the year favorites from 2017. <laughs> I, I took some time and did my investigation, y'all. And uh, this concealer came up so many times, whether it was a full face, my favorites video, my end of the year favorites video. And I think it's just because from the very beginning, I was able to get the coverage that I needed because um, I used to have super duper bad acne. And um, it, it gave me coverage, but it also gave me the um, like blendability that I needed to be able to work this in with other products, other full coverage matte products. After this concealer, there were only two powders I could find that I talked about over and over and over again. And you can probably guess the first one, my Maybelline Fit Me in 05 Fair. And I actually didn't realize this one. I thought that I found this in 2018. And evidently I found this like right when I started my channel. So good to know. Um, but it was down between that one or my Airspun. And I thought for today, since how we're, you know, playing around, I thought we would go in with my Airspun um, just for old time's sake. So I'm going to be grabbing this, which... Okay, goodbye. As I was saying, I'm gonna use this, which is actually, ooh, that was satisfying. It's a brand new container, so I am going to just uh, dump some of this into the cap here and set my face, and I'm going to set my under eyes with this and my T-zone, because those are just the areas on my face that not only need to be set first <laughs> to prevent excessive creasing, um, but they also need to be set with a sponge because it works better for me. And then to lightly set the rest of the face, I'm just gonna grab my Scott Barnes 67, and I'm going to very lightly tap this on the rest of my face. Because for those of you that are not familiar or you've never used Airspun or you've always kind of wondered about it, Airspun has a much more... Um, I'm gonna say aggressive set than the Maybelline Fit Me. The Maybelline Fit Me, you can really work with. You can kind of build it backwards. You can definitely get matte with it, but you can also get skin-like to satin. At least I can. And with Airspun, if you're not careful, you will end up looking like the most matte, sun-dried little raisin <laughs> that ever exists. Okay, guys, so really quickly, I just reached and I grabbed my bronzer and all of that, which we will definitely get to here in a second. But first, I had to call attention to one thing. Um, does my face, my skin, my complexion look 
looked fantastic to anybody else or is it just me? Because I'm so impressed. It looks so, so nice. And I can't tell if it's just because like I haven't done a matte finish look in so long, but this looks really nice. Like I, for, I think I forgot how like matte skin makes you look so just like, mm, like your boss, you're like in control and it has like a sternness to it that's also really perfected. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I don't even know if that description makes sense, but damn, does that look nice. I am so impressed. And this is coming from somebody that has sat here for probably the last five minutes just oogling herself. <laughs> like, damn, I've looked in this mirror, my monitor, I've asked Jesus, I was like, Jesus, what do you think? Like, <laughs> I've been calling in opinions from the outer realms, okay? And uh, it looks so, so good. But anyways, per my promise to you that we would move on to bronzer and not just sit here and stare at myself, although, <laughs> damn. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the bronzer that I chose today because for this, I ended up picking a bronzer and I had a couple of options. There weren't really a ton that I was like in love and love with, but out of all the ones that I did try that I kept going back to, um, this one was not only the one that I felt was most appropriate for what I really truly fell in love with, but I really felt like this bronzer encapsulated like all the things, especially at that time that I loved in a bronzer. And that is none other than the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer. Obviously this bronzer out of all the bronzers I could have chosen is a little bit controversial because a lot of people felt like this bronzer was actually just a huge marketing ploy. Um, because for those of you that don't remember or if you weren't into it back then, I will kind of refresh your memory. But uh, I believe when this came out, Marc Jacobs released it and a bunch of people said they loved it. It sold out super fast and they kept saying like, it's coming back and then we're never bringing it back again. So then people would try to like run out and flood to get it and then it would sell out and everybody was all upset. And basically Marc Jacobs created so much hype over this bronzer and they re-released it like four or five times until people were like, wait a second. <laughs> I thought nobody could get this again. I thought it was limited edition. As far back as I can remember, this is like the first time where that marketing tactic was like so oh, oh, like aggressive. Like people were getting so angry. These were selling on eBay for like $150. Like it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy time. And uh, for the for people that were diehard obsessed and in love with it, they were willing to pay the extra money. They would pay whatever it took. And I'm a little bit embarrassed, but like also not really to admit that I am one of the people that when they re-released this for the second time, I was so worried I wasn't gonna be able to get another one that I actually bought a backup of, which, you know, do I think that I needed a backup? Absolutely not. Like my original is still floating around here somewhere. I just can't find it. But uh, for the purposes of today's video, I'm really grateful that I have it because I can't find my original one anywhere. And so for today's video, I'm actually unveiling a never before used one. And I don't even know why I'm that excited. Like now so many years have went by that, is it still an amazing bronzer? Absolutely. But like, why am I still as giddy as a schoolgirl to use it? I don't know. Like it just still excites me so much. Honestly, guys, I retract my statement. I retract all of it. As I sit here, I apply it. I regret nothing because it is so good. <laughs> like it has the most beautiful color, the most beautiful texture to it. It's just, it's a stunning, stunning bronzer. I feel like my light just changed so bad. Also, like, did I over bronze a little bit? I mean, maybe we're going to talk about it later. It's fine. We'll fix it. Not a big deal. All right. So now it's going to get a little interesting because you guys know, like Paige now in 2020, I am diehard in love with blush. I wear it all the time. I mix like two to three different shades. It's something I talk about in almost every favorites video. Like blush is one of those things that I just constantly find myself being like pulled towards. And back in 2017, I really, from like all the videos I went through, blush wasn't something that I ever really talked about. Like whether it was a full face video or if it was a favorites video, my end of the year favorites, like I, I guess I had a couple that I really liked, but it was nothing like it is now for me. And it's so interesting to look back on that dynamic because back then, you know, again, looking back at like the footage and how I presented myself and what was important, I think that I was so obsessed with my complexion and making sure that like my acne was covered and that everything was a hundred percent like plastered full face like I wanted full coverage and then full powder making sure that my skin was totally covered with all of those steps and just really being beat to full coverage filth that was like such a high priority that I think everything else after that was literally an afterthought like it was it mattered and I knew that it was there and that it needed to be done but I didn't care nearly as much about like textures and consistencies and that sort of stuff and I don't even know if this conversation 
situation is one that's like even relevant to you guys, you can let me know down below. But I just wanted to put it out there that if you are someone that is either just starting your makeup like journey or whatever, or you've been doing it for years, like it doesn't matter. It can happen at any point. But if you ever feel like you are like weighted down or you're feeling just like really like ob not obnoxious, but if you're feeling fixated on something, like for me, it was my complexion and I was fixated on not going anywhere. I wouldn't leave the house. And I was so just, I was dialed in on making sure that everything was just covered in full beat and full everything. And it, it took away like so many of the other happinesses, ha happinesses, ha happies, hap it took away a lot of other happy stuff, okay? And it made me not like fall in love with blush and highlight and bronzer and stuff that I normally would have so much passion for because I was so just fixed on that. Like I said, I don't even know if it's relevant, but I just wanted to say that if that's you, there is, I, I mean, I guess in this situation, there is blush at the end of the tunnel, if you will. Um, eventually, I think we all kind of get to a place where we were able to see ourselves for who we are and we change what we can. And if we can't change it, we don't, but we learn to like, love our face or our skin or our body or whatever and eventually we we kind of have like this coming to moment and for me I think that when that happened I was able to love and discover and that would really enter like the blushes and the bronzers and the highlights and textures and quality of makeup and the refinement like all of the little things that I wasn't able to appreciate because I was so fixated on my skin and my acne and my texture all of the sudden those things I was able to see and appreciate and it's just it's so cool to get to look back on those older videos and see that like change in me. Um, but anyways, all of that should be said for today's video. I picked the blush that I thought was very reminiscent of my super fun and like poppy spirit when I first got started. Milani's Coral Cove blush. This is, this is such a bright blush and I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful and it is one that I fell in love with. I'm applying this with the 420 brush from uh, Beautylish. They came out with this line of brushes and they're super nice quality. Oh my goodness. Look at how cute she is. Just a cute little coral moment happening. Oh my goodness. And I'm still going to carry just like I do nowadays. I'm going to carry a little bit of that blush up onto the nose and then a little bit up onto the forehead. All right, so now we're moving on to brows. And for those of you that have been here for a while, you can say it with me. I am going in with none other than the ColourPop Bang & Brunette pencil. This was, <laughs> this was the pencil to end all pencils. Like I literally would not use anything else. I thought it was ridiculous to buy other pencils. Like this was my cult classic favorite 2017 pencil. Hell, probably even for, I would say most of 2018, like this was the pencil that I gravitated towards. As far as, do I still like it? Like the consistency is nice. I still keep these in my drawer. I still like them. Um, so it's not an issue of it being like a bad or a good pencil, but in the last couple of years, I've really started to refine what I like my brows to look like. And in doing so, I realized that the, um, the ColourPop one is still good. It's no longer my diehard favorite. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, I still do recommend it, like I said, cause it's super affordable and it is a really nice pencil. All right. So really quickly here, I'm just going to go ahead and throw on some Tarte Shape Tape to prep and prime the lids. And I also wanna mention that I did go in with a little bit of brow gel for today. And in 2017, your girl didn't use brow gel evidently, um, but in 2020, I most definitely do. So I went ahead and I just added a little bit of my ABH dip brow gel in deep brown. But moving on from there, it is time to talk about eyeshadow. And I pulled for you guys the eyeshadow palette, like the one and only. It was my favorite three years ago this month. And that is none other than the Too Faced Natural Love Palette. Oh my God. <laughs> I remember this. I remember the images of it being released, how everybody was just so excited, whether you were on trend mode, all of the influencers, like everybody was talking about this palette. And just looking down at this really quickly, I just want to, you know, remind everyone at home, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it has seven matte shades. Out of all of these, it has seven <laughs> matte shades. The rest are all shimmer. Now, in the event that things start to get a little bit crazy, I'll have to zoom the camera back out, but I wanted to at least zoom you in so you could hopefully see what's going on and also so you could see how my complexion is looking because damn, it looks so good. Um, okay, <laughs> enough, you know, balking at myself. Let's go ahead and talk about colors out of this little fella right here. I'm thinking I want to start off with the shade honey butter right down here, which is like a neutral <laughs> matte shade. What a, what a shocker. Out of this, I mean, why didn't I pick the hot purple? Oh yeah, there isn't one. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm just going to lightly repat out that Tarte Shape Tape here. And I'm going to go ahead with my Sigma E40. 
and just kind of dust that shade through the crease. I'm not really doing for today, especially with this palette, I'm not going to be doing like a super in-depth eye look. Right, so I just want you guys to know, it just took me so long to uh, build that up in the crease and I couldn't figure out like, you know, it doesn't seem like it's that light. And then I swatched it on my hand and that right there is two coats, ladies and gentlemen two coats. <laughs> so it's it's a much lighter shade, doesn't have a ton of pigment. Uh, definitely not what I'm used to in today's world, but that's fine. Uh, from there, I'm going to go ahead and go in with the shade Makeup and Chill, which is a dark brown right here. Okay. All right. So this one has like more, definitely more pigment to it. Like the, the depth is actually showing up. Okay. Also really quickly, there's nobody going to tell me that my lips were like crusted busted to the max right now. Oh my God. Like, ew. I don't know what happened there, but it's not cute. Also, fun fact, I'm currently using a simple brand micellar wipe, one of these little guys right here, and they were also in my first ever makeup favorites video along with uh, this palette. So I've also loved these for a really long time because they're a really, really awesome wipe. I don't know why I thought you needed to know that, but I guess you did because I said so, so. Haha, <laughs> now you know. Even if you didn't want to know, you were duped into knowing and that's just what you get for showing up here. I'm going to dupe you into knowing random fun facts about me. It's what we do. <laughs> so next up, per usual, I'm gonna grab a little bit of my NYX Glitter Glue. I think I wanna play around first with the shade Cutie Patootie right here. It's a really beautiful, like, satin pink, like, baby pillow pink shade. Baby pillow pink. I don't know what the hell that means, but apparently that's a thing. So I'm gonna take and just kinda pop that all over the lid. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay, that color's Gorge. Did I just say gorge? The inner portion here, I'm going to layer a little bit of kittens, which is that fun purple shade. I'm going to pop that just like right in here, just, just to add a little bit of dimension. So there's like a light little pop of purple, like right on the inner third. And then I'm going to take the shade Fairy Tale, which was like the brighter color. Holy cow. And uh, we're going to throw that. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. And then just for a little depth, I'm grabbing the shade Love Bug, which is like a shimmery, deep, like mauve purple. Oh, ooh, that's pretty. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I approve. I approve. I approve. That's so pretty. Okay, so really quickly, while I was uh, just changing the battery whatnot, I went ahead and I finished up my other eye so we could kind of move on past what we have going on here. I am going to take some black liner, like a gel liner, and smudge it along my top lash line. And for that, I'm going to use none other than my favorite, my hands down favorite eyeliner for years. Years, and that would be my Urban Decay 24 7 uh, gel glide on eyeliner. This is in the shade Perversion, and this <laughs> was such a favorite of mine, uh, which rightfully so. These are really good pencils, even still to this day. They last really well, they have really nice pigmentation. But like the level of obsession that I had with this black liner, in like specifically. Oh, it's, it's, it's unhealthy. <laughs> the good thing about these pencils is that they are super creamy. So you can just kind of spread them along your lash line, like really haphazardly. And then you can grab a smudger brush, which I'm going to grab the Morphe. Uh, this is the JH42. It's a teeny tiny little brush. And I'm just going to lightly kind of smudge that in. Actually, you know what? I like the way that looks, but just to have a little more fun, I'm going to grab the shade Stiletto out of this palette. It's a black matte shade. And I am going to, I think, use that to kind of smudge into the eyeliner with the same brush just a little bit here just kind of lightly smudge it out it'll not only diffuse the line and help blend it a little bit but it'll also give it a little bit more richness all right so I went ahead and I got that done on both sides I zoomed the camera out and looking at my face in real life I think on camera it's not showing up as much but in real life I definitely think I need to um, add a little bit of brightening to other areas of my face and for that you guys I know how we all feel nowadays but back in 2017 so so many of us reached for none other than the Kat Von D shade and light palette. I know, I know. Don't come for me. It's just the reality of the times, guys. This palette was such a favorite. For today, I'm gonna be going in with this and I'm going to be taking the first shade right there, the shade that I've already obviously hit pan on. So I'm taking a little bit of this first and going in under the eyes on my Scott Barnes 64 brush here and just using it to lighten up that entire area. Dang, I forgot how nice this powder was. Holy shit! You guys see that? Damn. Okay. And while we're at it, we're also going to hit the other area. So center of the forehead for sure. Because, you know, your girl got a little bit crazy with her bronzer. Also, who let me walk around looking all crazy? I had a chunk of damn brow gel in the front of this brow. Y'all know, but nobody told me. 
rude. All right, so really quickly before I go in with highlight, I am gonna give my face a spray just to start settling everything together, take away a little bit of that powdery look. And for that, I'm actually going to use a product that I meant to use as a primer um, because I've always loved it. I've used it so many times, but I forgot to use it as a primer. So I'm gonna use the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water, which you can use at the end of your makeup as a setting spray if you like. I personally do enjoy it as a primer water, so I've always used it for that. But because I want it in today's video, I'm gonna use it right now and just call it a day. So let's go ahead and give it a mist here. All right, so now moving into highlight, I have pulled two highlights, and I'm gonna start off by saying, number one, I did not pull the highlight that several of you are probably thinking, which is the um, Hourglass Ambient one, the Trio, which I know re-releases, and I'm so excited. Um, it's like, I think maybe the day you're watching this or right around now, either way, I'm pumped for that, but uh, I'm not talking about that because I do talk about that all the time. And so instead, I decided to pull a different, two different highlights, ones that in 2017, I distinctly remember being die hard in love with and the first one right here is from Tarte and this is their skin twinkle palette now this palette oh my god you guys I was so so in love with this all of the shades in here are really nice it has a refinement powder right here which is like a really nice I would say kind of like a light finishing powder and then it has a deeper highlight which I did swatch you can barely see it but it's right there and then the lighter one which I use of course is over here and then the other highlight that I grabbed needs really no introduction because I wore it all the time. I believe I have or had two of them and like I used up a full one and that is of course from ColourPop. This is the shade Stole the Show and it's one of their Super Shock Cheek pearlized highlighters and this oh my god <laughs> this brings back so many memories like the texture everything oh my god that is so oh it's so good look at how bright that is Oh my god, you guys, this makes me feel so old and so good. I'm gonna grab my, this is my Elf Jelly Pop stipple, and we're just gonna go in. Ooh, okay, she's got a little something to her. It's definitely on the softer side, but it's really pretty. You guys see that? Oh, yes, you can, honey. Oh my god, skin twinkle. My skin is more than twinkling, honey. My skin is dinkling, dinkling. Well, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> I, I normally I have a really good like quick wit and sometimes it worked really well sometimes it fails Dinkling that's an example of it failing <laughs> failing now. We grab a little bit here of our stole the show Ooh, So blinding and I like to kind of press that all over up there again We're really overdoing the highlight today. Also, what is it say it with me? Chalupa chin right here. Yes, you see how greasy we look girl. We look like we didn't even eat the chalupa We just let the grease slide down my big old pointy chin and I'm here for it All right So now before I go in with mascara and lip a lot of you know I like to set my face completely and let it all dry and for that I'm gonna go in with my other two favorite setting sprays from 2017 and one of them still reigns true to this day And that is my urban decay all-nighter This was my jam from the very beginning and I was very excited to see it in my favorites because this is such an amazing setting spray. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter than usual just because um, it is a like a more matte setting spray and right now my skin is already pretty matte. And then over top of that, even though it might seem counterintuitive, I'm gonna take my other setting spray that I was in love with in 2017 and that is the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray with Coconut Water, Probiotic Based Ingredients, and Skin Revivers because my skin girl, it needs to be revived. So I'm gonna take some of this. Oh, my skin looks so good right now. Oh. It doesn't even look 2017 good, honey. It looks 2020 good. Like, I got 2020 and I can see that it looks good. Yes. Just kidding. I'm blind as a bat. I can't see shit. <laughs> All right, now it's time for mascara. This stuff was all I would talk about. Like in, in 2017 going into 18, if you asked me ever, Paige, what's your favorite mascara? For a solid year, year and a half, this was my only answer. It is the only mascara I would wear day after day, like month after month, year, literally year after year. I think for me, what really kept drawing me in over and over to this mascara was the way that you could really build it on your lashes. And over time, I, I did notice that it had like a light heaviness to it that I wasn't a fan of. But when I first started using 
using it, it was like the first one I had used that really did give me the length that I wanted. It had gave me definition, but it also gave me some bulk and some volume. It looked nice on the lower lashes. And it was just, it was one of those mascaras that for so long I couldn't find anything else that topped it. Also really quickly, I'm just grabbing my uh, Perversion eyeliner again, and I'm doing my upper and lower waterline. All right, so for lips, I'm not gonna give a long introduction. I am going to say that 2017 was the year that I discovered what liquid lipsticks could be. And back then I did wear them, so I thought it appropriate to put one in this video. And for that, I have none other than a Jeffree Star liquid lip, and this is in the shade Christmas Cookie. Now, Christmas Cookie was one of those shades, I don't even know if this is still good. Like, it's questionable <laughs> because I haven't used, you guys know me, I haven't used liquid lips in so long. And I found this one in my collection. And the reason that I chose this, let me show you the color because I really, really like this shade. Um, oh, wow. That is that is definitely a questionable consistency. Overall, I chose his formula because there were a lot of favorites that I talked about as far as liquid lips go in 2017. But when it came right down to it, his liquid lip formula was so nice and light and I fell in love with the realization that like, wow, all liquid lips don't have to be thick or bulky or dry down and make me feel uncomfortable. I was really starting to have a problem at that time with liquid lips and my, my autoimmune stuff and just the texture in general. And his liquid lips took that away and, and they were just so nice and comfortable. For this, cheers to the formula. It changed the way that I viewed liquid lips and I love this color. It's so good. I, again, can't guarantee that it's like, safe to put on, but we're gonna do it anyways. I mean, really, what's the worst that could happen? Don't answer that. I don't wanna know the worst that could happen. I have enough problems. All right, beautiful people, this is how everything turned out. It's the final phase. What do you guys think? Um, let's go ahead and throw up really quickly and up close just so you guys can take a look at that. Uh, for me personally, I think all of the products worked out really well still, which is <laughs> really impressive. Um, the only thing that I think I would change going forward, like if I had to do this whole thing over again um, and I had a little bit more flexibility with powders, I would probably not put the air spun all over my face just because I think for my skin now I think it's changed enough and I'm not quite as oily um with this foundation in particular I would probably go in with a much lighter 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 powder like maybe just a finishing powder something to very lightly set everything in place and that's just because right now I'm looking a little bit more matte than I would like but other than that I think everything else turned out really nice and it was I think it was more fun than anything for me to just get to go through and play with the different textures and the consistency and and really just roll back through that whole feeling and like the nostalgia of it and the videos like going through my old videos what a what a trip other than that I want to hear from you guys what do you think were you cool with the idea would you like to see this video recreated with 2018 2019 makeup maybe do 2018 drugstore 2018 high end or I don't know like what what are you guys thinking if you haven't checked me out of course yet you can do so on Instagram and on Twitter they will both be linked down in the comments of course if you haven't subscribed please feel free to do that as well I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. So subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Oh my god. Well, hello, hi, hello, oh my god. Ah, okay. So here's the thing. I slept like a pretzel last night. Ah, oh, and I forgot until just right about now that I can't quite move my shoulder. Oh my God, that scared me. Well, now that we are all good and lightened, let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now before we go in with highlight, I am going to go ahead and give my spurt, my, my spurts a little spurts. <laughs> so we just got to buff in that skin twinkle first. Buff it in, buff it in. When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see the damn parade. <laughs> Those aren't the words.